Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan, and yes, we've reached half a million subscribers. I'm not really sure how we hit that colossal number, but I really want to thank all of you guys who have uh, you know, supported this channel up until now. I really do appreciate your support, and I want to milk this moment for uh, you know all it's worth. Instead of just doing a Q&A today or maybe doing like a nostalgic look back at our journey to this moment, I want to urge all of you guys out there to think about the frontline workers that are still out there risking their lives to make sure that our society does not grind to a halt and collapse. And I'm talking about the doctors, nurses, police officers, firefighters, truck drivers, grocery store workers, gas station attendants. Um, I want to say thank you to all of you people uh, who are you know, doing great work. And also, if any of you guys out there um, are lucky to still have a job or maybe some extra income, consider donating either to you know, friends or uh, local organizations, charities, religious groups that you know and trust, uh, because I think it's a good moment for us to really extend our hands to our neighbors and help them out in this moment of crisis. We are one of the richest countries in the world. We definitely have more than enough wealth uh, to go around and help each other make it through this crisis. I found a CDC fundraiser on Facebook where Facebook will match your donation. It's about time that company reverses some of the damage it's done to the world. But anyway, guys, for, for any of you out there who are at home and are lonely or scared or stressed out or anxious or bored, Remember, humanity is number one. Humanity is strong and humanity will prevail in this situation. And to kind of remind us how, of how great humanity is, today we're going to restart our faction series, which basically looks at different alien species and points out their strengths and weaknesses. Because our philosophy here at Generation Tech is that in order to help humanity, we need to learn more about our galactic neighbors so that we can improve our relations with them or destroy them if need be. Now, we already covered the Umbaran people, otherwise known as the Shadow People, which is only specious if you say it to their face. We've also covered Hut Slugs and Twi'lek Tentacle Heads. And now today we'll be looking at the Wookiees, one of the few alien species that we here at Generation Tech have cleared for human friendship. In this video, we'll be looking at their biological strengths and weaknesses, their cultural strengths and weaknesses, and their technological strengths and weaknesses. Wookiees are pretty easy to identify, standing at an average height of around 7.3 to 8.3 feet and covered head to toe in a thick shaggy coat of hair, they stood out amongst the various alien species of the galaxy. They usually had brown coats, but some more rare Wookiees had black, gray, and white coats as well. The more rare colors were oftentimes prized by hunters and collectors. Wookiees had a pretty long lifespan compared to the average species as well. It wasn't uncommon for a Wookiee to live past 400 years. Chewbacca, for instance, was born around 200 BBY and was only in his early 200s by the time of the destruction of Hosnian Prime. Wookiees, who were around 200 years old, were considered to be in the prime of their life. Interestingly enough, they were considered full-grown adults by the time they were just 18, just like humans. They weren't considered middle age until their 300s and old until they were 350. 400 year old Wookiees were considered ancient. So unlike the Huts who were basically useless for their first 70 years, Wookiees, despite their long lifespan, seemed to spend most of their years in their prime. It's like being in your 20s for half of your life, which sounds pretty awesome if you ask me. It also means that a high percentage of the Wookiee population was able bodied and able to defend themselves. The Wookiees were physically impressive. Not only were they extremely strong, they were also very capable climbers thanks to their very dexterous hands and feet. Their finger dexterity also allowed them to be quite skilled with their hands and they were able to perform more delicate procedures despite the large size of their hands. They also had very high muscle density throughout their bodies and large sharp fangs in their mouths that could penetrate many things, including the durable scaly skin of a Trandoshan, their ancestral enemies. Wookiees were so strong that they were also known for ripping off their enemies' limbs in order to stop hostilities. Despite their heavy coats, Wookiees were also powerful and very comfortable swimmers. Their fur was actually waterproof and allowed them to be submerged in some pretty cold water for extended periods of time. The Wookiees also had massive lung capacity, which gave them better endurance. Now, with any larger framed species, there are going to be some significant disadvantages as well. For one, most of the galaxy is made for human-sized species. 
This means everything from cockpit seats, beds, and spacesuits had to be specifically tailored for the larger Wookiees. Their huge size also meant you had to feed them a large amount of food in case you're thinking about breeding Wookiees for manual labor. The average adult Wookiee required around 3,500 to 6,000 calories of food a day, which is equal to about three to five pounds of steak. Wookiees had their own complicated language and could learn how to understand other languages, but due to their anatomical structure, they found it very hard to speak most languages, including Galactic Basic. It was also quite rare for Wookiees to be force sensitive, but when they were, they usually became very formidable Jedi. Lastly, diseases like asthma were not uncommon for Wookiees, especially those who moved off world. The Wookiees' home planet of Kaishik was very important to their people's identity. They had an especially close connection to the giant trees which they lived in and carved out giant cities in. Everything in Kaishik from the insects to the massive trees were oversized, which made the life quite dangerous even for a large and powerful species like the Wookiees. The floor of the forest, known as the Shadowlands, were so dangerous that the Wookiees rarely ever ventured there and were forced to live in the canopies instead. While humans most likely would have tried to tame the planet and wipe out all the more threatening fauna, the Wookiees were pretty uh, happy with just finding harmony with their local environment and learning how to survive in it. This might be due to the Wookiees' more collective and spiritual society combined with their reliance on hunting and gathering. It's not that the Wookiees weren't smart or had access to advanced technology, they did. They just had no ambition to take over the entire planet and dominate all the wildlife there. The Wookiee warrior cultures seem to be the main focus of the society, which is why, at best, their economy had some basic free market practices but lacked any banking system or investment avenues to allow further development of their industrial and manufacturing capabilities. The Wookiees also had an honor code which guided a lot of the different elements in Wookiee society. One of the rules forbade Wookiees from using their claws for anything other than climbing. It shows us despite their large and imposing nature, the Wookiees place great importance in self-control and discipline. The Wookiee Chewbacca used his claws after seeing his friend Han Solo murdered and justified his actions by saying that the First Order had no honor. The Wookiee Honor Code also included the concept of life debt or surrendering one's life in servitude to another after they saved their life. It was rumored that Chewbacca owed Han Solo a life debt, which is why the two grew so close. While the Wookiees' appreciation of natural harmony and adherence to a strict code of honor might win them a lot of admiration from other species, it was actually a big weakness for their culture. Because of their planet's lack of development, the Wookiees of Kashyyyk were ill-suited to defend their planet from exterior threats, whether that be Trandoshan slavers, Separatist droids, or the Empire. The collective nature of the Wookiees also had some major benefits. For instance, all Wookiee infants were taken care of in a nursery ring, which was usually overlooked by elderly Wookiees. From the earliest age, these Wookiees were introduced to Kaishik's wildlife and learned how to survive in the wild by themselves. By the age of 12, males would perform an initiation ritual that signified them entering young adulthood. This usually involves some kind of dangerous situation that required a lot of preparation and discipline. This entire ceremony was designed to weed out the weakest members of the Wookiee tribe. In some tribes, that challenge could involve journeying into the Shadowlands on the floor of the Kaishik jungles and learning how to survive the many horrors that live there. Now, hunter and gatherer societies are usually stereotyped as being very backwards and simple-minded. But consider this, our ancient ancestors had to memorize massive amounts of flora to understand which were poisonous, which were edible, and which could be used for medicine. They also had to be able to track dozens of different animals, understand the signs and nature to help them predict what season it was. It took a massive amount of intelligence and knowledge to truly understand and survive in the wild. Something that people today, even with an iPhone with humanity's collective knowledge, would have trouble doing. The knowledge that our ancestors had was probably pretty different from anything we might learn today in institutions of higher learning, but ancient man definitely held a master's degree in how to survive in his natural surroundings. Now imagine how much more the Wookiees would have to learn on a much more extreme planet like Kashyyyk. And even though the Wookiees were one of the dominant species on the planet, their lack of complete control over their environments meant that each Wookiee lived close to the edge of danger and death. Cultures that are constantly fearing death and danger are naturally more prepared for extreme situations like conflict or natural disaster. 
A quick look at the Wookiee's history throughout the Clone Wars and Galactic Civil War shows that no matter what the galaxy tries to do to the Wookiees, they will continue to survive. As mentioned before, the Wookiees were terrific with their hands, which made them excellent craftsmen and artisans. Despite their low-tech appearance, the Wookiees were well-versed with modern technology and known for their ability to combine natural materials from their world into all sorts of vehicles and devices. For instance, the Wookiees would build airships and starships using wood from the washer tree for the hull. A good Wookiee mechanic was known for being able to temporarily repair almost anything on a starship, even something as complicated as a hyperdrive. The Wookiees were also excellent weaponsmiths. Which was a good thing because most blasters and vibro blades in the galaxy weren't made in Wookiee sizes. Two famous weapons that were commonly found in a Wookiee's arsenal was the heavy blaster known as a bowcaster and Reich blades. As mentioned before, the Wookiees didn't really get involved in mass manufacturing and rarely scaled up whatever cottage industry they were working in. Most of the advanced technology that the Wookiees received was imported. Their home planet of Kaishik was on an important hyperspace route, which gave them access to the rest of the galaxy. And so, while the Wookiees were known as terrific tinkerers and mechanics, they actually produced very little advanced technology domestically, making them quite vulnerable to outside attack by highly industrialized factions. So as you can tell, Wookiee society prepares the individual for success in life, but the society as a whole has some pretty big disadvantages, which is why they're constantly being exploited by external factions. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. And again, let's all remember uh, to think about those individuals out there who are still working on the front lines, keeping us safe and keeping society running. Thank you so much for all the great work that you guys are doing out there. Well guys, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.